Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. <laughs> good morning from Germany. Uh, just tell me where I should start now or how we handle this. Yeah, please just wait just a minute because we are introducing you. Okay. So good morning, everyone. We are starting the session on planning and control number two. Uh, and we are starting with a presentation. Uh, the, the, all the presentations will be performed online. We are starting with a presentation from Malta Schilling with the paper adaptation of a decentralized controller to curve walking in an exapod robot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, welcome from my side as well and good morning from Germany. And I would love to be there, but unfortunately I have teaching duties here in Germany coming up. So this is why I do the presentation online, but it's great that it's possible. So today I will introduce our work, which is an adaptation or a change extension of the WalkNet architecture, which I will introduce briefly in the next couple of slides and then show what's basically what we have done to work in the setting of curve walking. So in general, what we are interested in, or what my interest is, we're looking at insects or animals, how they behave in the environments. And what's really special about these animals is they produce very stable and robust behavior. And it's quite adaptive and it's, I find it quite impressive, especially as they have a very, very small brain. So the control system is very, very simple problem but still they can deal with things like crossing such a gap, climbing over this large hole there, making very, very good movements and adapting to the environment. And so there seems to be a couple of features or characteristics which are very important that this is possible with a very, very simple control system. And this is as a hierarchical organization and a decentralized organization. And this decentralization is something which is very well studied um, in insects, I would say. So I will just briefly introduce this. Here on the right side, you will now see a stick insect. And basically what the main idea is, if you're looking at a stick insect, how it moves around, how it locomotes, how it walks, it has six legs basically, each leg around three joints, or this is what we assume if we put it into a robot. So it's a quite complicated control problem, how to produce coordinated movements with all these 18 different joints. But the basic idea is probably that we break down the control at different levels. So the main idea of the WalkNet approaches and other approach follows this is that basically each leg has its own controller. And what this leg, what this controller is doing, basically there are two tasks. The one is to decide which movement primitive to perform and how to perform this. So and if we're looking at movement primitives, Basically, there are two movement primitives. One is the stance movement, standing on the ground, supporting the body. And one is a movement leaping to the front, the swing movement. And then there's in each leg a controller, which is basically, it's a local pattern generated. It, it generated in our case, it's important that this is switched a lot on sensory uh, impulses. So in slow walking animals, we are looking at that control is very driven by sensory inputs. So if we're looking into one of these controllers, so this is one of these boxes here, we have six of these there. Basically we have the swing part on the left and the stance part on the right. And what's important is that there are inhibiting con connections here in between of those. And we have now swing uh, this for different walking directions. It's not an important case for today. But now what's important is if each controller is doing his own thing and acting uh, autonomously, you might consider this might lead to cars. But that's not the case as we're introducing some form of coordination. This is done by coordination rules acting only between neighboring legs here, shown here on the right. And I'm not explaining all these rules in detail. And what's important, this is basically that these acts on the posterior extreme position. So if we're looking here now on a robot on the right, you see he's doing a swing movement shown in blue and the red is a stance movement. And we're looking at the transition from stance to swing. So this is a post to extreme position. So the position far to the back where it switches to a swing movement. And if we either delay this or uh, induce this a little bit earlier, this is how we can switch basically the timing of a single leg. And this is where this now, this different legs 
act on. If you're looking at the rules, they can move around this position when we switched from stance to swing movement. And just to give you an example, I explained the first rule. Basically, it is telling this is going from the hind leg to the middle leg and further to the front. Then is the idea is if a hind leg is in the swing movement, it's in the air, it's telling the leg in front to prolong its stance movement, not to go that early into the uh, into swing. So not to going in the air as well. So otherwise it would top over. If you just introduce these uh, rules between these you know, different controllers, what's happening is basically, and now this is a simulation I will show on the robot later on, for a very, very small velocity of the stance movement, what you basically see is um, that there is a pattern emerging. In the wave gate, as we are very, very uh, slow, you see it takes a little bit of time until we see the typical pattern we uh, observe in wave gates, that it's running from the hind leg to the middle leg to the front leg, and then repeat it on the other side. And now it's establishing very, very nicely, and it sticks to that same. Thing. So the gate is emerging, basically. And here we see Okay, I will just pause for a couple of until you hear. But so my microphone seems to be working. Can you hear me now? Okay, shall I continue, Armando? So for those in, in Zoom, it appears that uh, on site they cannot hear me. Okay, um, maybe I'll just go on and explain a little bit uh, some details, which are not too important here, but maybe we can do this uh, as we have the time now uh, until I see that, that they can hear me on site as well. So on the right side, what you see basically is you, you, you see um, the, the individual leg controllers. So this is a front left leg controller then we have the middle left black controller and we only show there the swing and the stance movement and the inhibiting movement there. You can see them with the videos flipping around. Um, on the lower left part, what you see is a footfall pattern. So basically it's showing on the x-axis the time and on the y-axis in different legs. And white means um, it's basically doing the stance movement and black is showing the swing movement going in the air. So what this nicely shows how the different legs are coordinated there. And it seems we still need a, one more minute to boot up the PC um, on site to get it running. So are there questions from, from the Zoom audience up until now? Okay, this looks promising. Do you hear me now? It's 
So I see uh, at least some image of the auditorium. Can you hear me there now? Yes, uh, Malta, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear yes. you. Yeah, so uh, uh, can you back up like two slides, please? Because I think that we missed you like two slides ago. F from this slide? Yeah, you, can you back up like one or two slides? Okay, uh, no, so, that, so basically one, I was... we, we could hear you, so you can, you can start from there and sorry very much. Uh, for the um, for the for the, the technical problem uh, no problem i'll try to 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 make it uh, quick now in, in these slides and so that we're not completely running overboard so the main idea of, of the walknet approach is that it's a decentralized control approach so the idea is that each leg has its own controller and this leg this controller decides which movement to perform so we have the two levels so the higher level decides which action is the leg performing, a swing or a stance movement, and then there's, of course, how to perform the movement. So in a way, we have a local pattern generator in each leg, which is mostly sensory driven. We are looking at very slow walking uh, animals here. This is how this looks. One of these controllers in the inside, we have the swing part on the left and the stance part on the right. And important is that there are inhibitory connections between those. Now, if each leg is doing its own thing, this could be ending in chaos and the thing is toppling over. So the idea is that there are rules between legs which are co coordinating them. And it's important that there are only neighboring rules. And how does this work? So basically, these legs can coordinate. And this coordination is done if you're looking at the robot here walking, for, uh, he's walking in the right direction. Basically, we're looking at the transition from stance to swing movements. And this is described by the posterior extreme position. And if we delay this a little bit, so push it further to the back, or induce it a little bit earlier, pushing it more to the front, we're just um, altering um, the, the cycle of, of the movements there. So and that's basically what these rules are doing. And um, I'm only explaining the first rule. Mainly it says going from the back to the, to the front. Mainly it says if, one, if the hind leg is in the air, it tells the leg in advance, the middle leg, please stay on the ground a little bit longer. And this leads, and I'm, I've shown this video, um, basically uh, to quite emerging um, gait patterns. Here. If we're driving this with a slow velocity, meaning the stance velocity is set to slow, there emerges a pattern, and we see that it's taking a couple of steps as if it's walking very slow, but then we see a very, very nice pattern organizing in the footfall pattern. The footfall pattern is shown here on the left lower part. It indicates in black when the legs are in swing movements over time. You know, and now you see a stable pattern emerging. If we're doing the same now with a higher velocity, what we see is basically we're seeing the typical tripod case. And it looks like it's immediately there and that's because it very fastly adapts to these movements here. And it's quite uh, stable. The good thing with these emergent patterns is basically um, that they're quite adaptive. They can react to disturbances like losing a leg, climbing through swings, or so on. And basically, that's my main one of my main points I want to get towards today. So often we see like this fixed gates, these uh, long-term evolved patterns, and we say, okay, this is a fixed gating pattern we see, like the tripod gate or the tetrapod gate. And this is how animals walk. But what we know from insect literature is that often this doesn't look so perfect like here in a very, very uh, simple simulation. Instead, these are very irregular in that nature. And one good example is in which is, I find surprisingly little studied in robotics is you're looking at curve walking. So this is an insect doing curve walking. And suddenly you see this pattern is all over the place. So the legs are completely the timing between these different legs is very different, difficult to describe. It doesn't look so regular. It's very, very adapting to the current curve it's walking. So this is why we choose curve walking as a case where we say, okay, how does this work with our system? And we tested this with our system. This is shown in the paper in more detail a little bit. There's not too much insect data to really make a quantitative comparison. 
but mainly we're quite okay with doing uh, slight curves. But with really tight curves, it's getting more difficult for our systems. And the reasons for this, and we basically adapted this, and I can explain this to you. So the first extension is basically looking, so now we have the robot, he's walking to the right again, or to the right and up, so he's turning upwards. And basically what I described before I was this post to extreme position, transition from stance to swing movement. This was in the normal walk net version just measured along the body axis. So the whole horizontal, so this is this green line. So we basically look when does, this are the gray arrows, when does the leg move behind this post to extreme position. But if you're doing a tight curve, you start to move away from this um, from this posterior extreme position, and the steps get very, very long until you cross that. So a simple extension is simply to look at the real step length, like looking at the radii from the starting point, the anterior extreme position. And this has a dramatic effect already on coordination. I will show on the next slide. The next problem which might occur in tight curves is that if you're moving into a tight curve, you're pushing your leg under your body, the inner leg, and the outer is getting too far outstretched. So we're just adjusting the swing movement that it's aiming more away for the inner legs from the body and for the outer legs closer to the body so that it's adjusting already a little bit uh, and moving away from getting the slack under the body, which is the most dramatic problem here. And the last part is um, to get this movement and I'm not going into details on how the the kinematic trajectories are computed. We use an internal body model for this. It's a weak kind of neural network, but basically we pull it at the front. If we want to do turning on the spot, what we introduce is we introduce another vector, which is pulling at the back so that we can basically then do turning on the spot. So, and here are the effects of the first uh, of these alterations. So on top, you see the walk net. Uh, version, so the original rocknet as uh, presented in, in a couple of publications. And then we're doing different curves and they're getting tighter and tighter. And what you see is here multiple ones from in A, B, and C. So it's walking initially to the right and then they're doing turns and slide turns are doing quite well. Only this instance, so this is on the robot, by the way, uh, it drifted somehow away. But if we're doing tighter curves, it can do that. It's a little bit unsteady, and but then it basically breaks completely down. So this is the middle point of the robot over time track from a camera bar. If we controlled for the step line, what you see basically that we can do very, very tight curves and they're looking very, very um, symmetric in that case. So the second part is now, shifting the AAP and again we're looking and here now we're looking also at velocity and different curvatures here. What we see in the initial version if we're getting towards these borderline cases is that it's getting also not not looking that well and only now one of these effects turned on this helps also. In the end we introduced all these effects if you want to look at the details look at the paper or ask and the questions or why drop me a mail. But I just wanted to show you a little bit uh, of, of, of the results. First, the table, I'm not going into the details, but we're looking here at the different velocities. Baseline is original walk net. Ours is the model where we introduced all three of these adaptations. And here we look basically at the static stability and how much of the time it, it, it adhered to static stability. And what we see is that up to very high velocities for, for the six leg robot, it is for large portions of the time stays in, in that range. And even for very, very tight curves, 1.57, so half pi is turning on the spot. To show you how much more stable this is getting, I show you on the right part. And here you see the body height computed over time. So while the robot is turning with quite a tight curve, what you see is that it's quite wobbly in the initial version shown on top. But after we introduced um, our, um, our extensions, it's basically staying on a very, 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 on very much on the height of the only very small deviations from that height, which is mainly due when an leg is hitting the ground, there's some slight wobbling visible. And last, I just want to show you some, uh, some videos. So first one of the simulation. 
and uh, you see that it's a six leg robot. It's not that fast, but it's quite good in, in doing this tight curve with this medium velocity. And these gating patterns, I haven't shown you those, are just emerging from the interactions of the legs. And now the same thing on the robot. So he's walking to the right. And you will see that he's producing a curve walking movement. But well, similar as an insect is basically that the middle inner leg is something, it's something like an anchor for the movement. So it's not really making movements to the front, but mostly turning around this. And lastly, we have now a turning on spot, again, with this medium to high velocity. So in this case, you basically see that the front of the robot is turning to the left and the hind is turning to the right. This leads to this more or less turning on the spot. So just as a summary, um, first of all, I, I reintroduced basically, or I tried to explain that the, the idea of the walk net of this decentralized control that in walking animals, locomotion emerges from such interaction of these control modules in slow walking, driven by sensory input, uh, probably. Then that we adapted this for core curve walking and that the stability and capa capabilities were improved, even though we had very, very simple adaptations only to this. And this reproduces quite nicely the behavior of, of stick to insects. And basically that's it for my side. Thanks for your attention. And, and sorry for, for the problems in the beginning. I hope now the, the sound was better. So thank you very much, Malta. So in the room, does anyone has any question? No. So Malta, let me just ask you one thing. Um, I saw that um, that you have implemented in practice the um, the gate that you have developed, the, the algorithm that you have developed. But for example, I saw a little, I think I saw a little bit of slippage in the video. Uh, are you planning on um, improving that? And is it affecting uh, in practice the results that you are getting in the, um, according to the, to, the, um, to the algorithm? So, so thanks, it's a good question. So. Uh, the slippage in robots, as in like robots, as we probably all know, is is a problem. And you saw it was a wooden floor there, which is probably not helping there a lot. So using a carpet would help with uh, the slipping, probably. Um, is it affecting the control? Actually, no. And I think that that the work that controls this idea of emergent gates, it's quite well um, suited for this problems. So we did this be before we did curve walking in an old study, I think 2015 or something like this, where we looked at basically displacing legs in simulation um, from the outside. And this is like a slip. So you have a leg and then you uh, exert an external force and move it to a different position. So to basically um, distort the coordination between the legs there. And the so walknet basically adapted in in the next single step cycle immediately uh, to this to this dis disturbance. So it's quite good at dealing with these disturbances. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much once again.